In this episode, we'll be going over some more footage of the survival arena that we've uh, captured and talking about how positioning and strategy helps. Hello, hello, hello. Whether it's morning, afternoon, or night, appreciate you tuning in and stopping. Uh, welcome to my space. Uh, today, we've got some more footage that we've recovered and uh, saved for just a few episodes here. And we're going to be diving in, going in depth, talking about the footage, what we see, um, how we're interpreting it, and why Grant is either winning or losing these matches based on the information we see. I hope you enjoy. I hope you find something uh, valuable, entertaining, uh, what have you. Uh, please like and subscribe to the video. It helps out the channel. And let's get into it. All right, so we've got some more recording of uh, some of Grant's uh, gameplay that we've we've kept for a while now, and uh, in this wave we're on wave nine. These two are very tanky. We're gonna have to do a lot of damage to to take those out, and we know that the Malura, and uh, I I don't know if this is a Vermi. It looks like the, the same Vermi that we have. So it'll jump across. The Malura will jump across. And the others are just kind of there. Uh, I like the placement of the Axon here. Um, but I probably would have moved the the Cephorus uh, Tier 2 uh, over here to the, the left side. Um, because it is also strong against them too. And we need a little bit more uh, damage um, that counters the the magma and the bloom uh, in order to take those out pretty quickly um, i imagine you can take out the seer a lot quicker than Gal the goliant here um, we have our our hunter or ranger whatever you want to call it and it looks like he's activated either the i can't tell if that's white or blue but it, it's probably uh wind affinity uh, because we have more wind um, here than we do water we only have the one water which is axon so it looks like that would be air and um, he's going to be attacking the the gliant um, these three in the front row I, b I believe this other cuculus might be attacking the gliant as well um, and then all of these will be attacking uh, the gliant except for him when he teleports over he he will target the other cuculus on the other side so with that in mind we have the blazonite that's going to help keep the team alive we have archie in the middle of everything and he's going to cast some heals so his heals may affect the hunter and the the bigger cuculus here um and see for us but uh that would be it because his heal isn't that big um i imagine these three units on this one axon are going to take this out very quickly and so you're you're going to need a little bit more defense on this side probably to take take out and and stop this wave uh, from just crashing in on you from the left side uh the goliant i'm not sure has much damage um, per attack, but his uh, stun ability definitely goes through some of your units here if he if he gets it off and hits the Blazonite. Um, so you'll you'll see maybe two or three other units right there on the way to Blazonite that may get stunned. Uh, so that that's something that you need to consider. Um, I would actually like it if blazonite was pushed off a little further to the right so that whenever uh, he did activate his ability it might miss some of these other units that are attacking um, you could also move some of some of these units a little further to the left and blazonite to the right uh, because we're not we're not really scared blazonite's gonna die here um, it's it's the rest of our army um, that's kind of balled up that we're preventing some stuns and some damage here 
And let's just uh, see what happens now that we've uh, walked through this and seen where the damage is coming from. All right, so there's that one. Axon dies extremely fast. We did get the heal off. It affected even the big cuculus there. That's good. And our rogue is still alive, and he's tanking some of the damage for our damage dealers right now to finish off these last two units. All right, so hero rogue. That's good. Now wave 10. It looks like we have uh, Dwellif, Ramfire, Malura. This is the Ador, uh, Adorado, and then Archie. And he's about to press play. So we've still got the two Cuculus in. We've got the hunter ranger here he moved axon behind slightly um we put in the the uh rake okay rake not umbre but rake um here which is going to jump on the adder adorado uh blazonite is still in we've still got our seaforest tier two so things to note here we have Ramfire jumping across, and unfortunately, we probably didn't place this Axon far enough behind to meet him in battle. Uh, the 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 Rake is going to jump across, so he'll he'll be useless for defending against the Ramfire here. Um, chances are the Ramfire is going to jump across and then immediately come in contact with the Cuculus or this Archie, perhaps, because the Archie might just stand still. Um, the Malura also will jump across, come to think of it. Um, so that might endanger our Blazonite, which is a bad thing. We have to protect him, um, and we have to protect against the Ramfire. So in this situation, I would probably move our Seaforest back to, to come in contact with the Malura, and I would move the the axon back as well. Um, the other thing that I don't like here is that the the damage that's going to be walking forward to attack their first target um, is probably going to go straight for the the Adorado, um, possibly here, uh, which is fine. Uh, that's what we want them to take out. But the the damage from this Dwellif scares me because if they they trap themselves between Blazonite and Dwellif, uh, as we see here, then Dwellif will just strike down all of our units at, at one with one blast. Uh, we don't want that to happen. So I would have liked to have seen maybe some of these units move to the right. Um, we want our two defensive units to distract the rogues back here. And then the other units that, that we want to be our damage dealers uh, scooted over to the right. Because I would like to see them charge forward, just plow through Archie, and then take out Adorado. That would get rid of their entire um, healing and shielding abilities. And from there, they would either come back to deal with the Malura and Ramfire, or they would probably walk on to kill uh, Dwellif back here. And with that in mind, let's uh, just play through this and see what actually happens. Okay, so they march forward. They attack Adorado. These three are still taking out Archie. Uh, as soon as they take out Archie, they turn around and contact the Malura. And then Malura goes untargetable, so they charge forward, wipe out Dwellif, and then come back around, deal with the Ramfire, and Malura, and we're good. So now we're going into wave 11. We're getting rid of Rake. We're putting back in Dwellif. So he probably wants that to attack the Arkelion. 
I don't like that positioning of Blazonite. We need Blazonite uh, to be more of a defender here. So he's about to press play. So in this case, our opponent has um, Goliant, who has the stun attacking the, the furthest away unit, which would be Dwelef. So all of our army is out of range of the stun that he could be using. That's, that's awesome. That's good. Um, we see a bunch of heals over here in the corner. So he's got his own Blazonite. He has Arkelion. Our Dwelleth will be uh, firing through all of those units to get to Arkelion, which uh, should be fine. It should be good. Um, the Axon uh, Atlas will probably get taken out by Dwelleth since he's a tier three. He's a tier tier one pretty easily. Not really uh, scared of that, but um, he's got some AOEs and is tanky. He's got some AOE and is tanky, and then he's pretty tanky with heals behind them. Um, so I'm I'm not sure how I like being clustered like this. Like I was saying, the the Blazonite is a ranged atta attacker. <clears throat> So you could technically move him back. Seferis is a ranged attacker. You could he's he's fine. He probably won't get hit immediately with the the AOEs. Um, but he could be technically moved back slightly. And then you've got your your front line. So the the two Cuculus and your Ranger uh, should be right up on the line, and your ranged attackers behind them at a slight distance because there are some AOEs that you don't want to have to take damage from if you don't have to in this case. Um, let's just see what happens. Okay, so he's getting taken out here. Our front line's getting melted a bit. You got Seer down. Rye Plants is down. Goliant is down. And it looks like uh, Cuculus and his dodges, defense, and attack is good enough to tank some of that remaining damage with Archie healing behind and Seferis and Dwelleth doing the damage in the back line. So now we've got Wave 12. Wave 12, we're looking at a Ramfire, a Seer, a Titanor, a Scoriox, and Rake. So a lot of Fire, Steam, and Granite. So we definitely probably want Axon in there, you would think. Um, so he ended up with... His two Cuculus over here on the left side, which Ramfire is going to target the smaller one here, um, unless they walk forward too fast, then Ramfire will target the Blazonite, um, and then move on to to kill the uh, Arkelion here, the Archie. Um, Seferis probably should be placed over here on the left hand side. We know Rake is going to jump across and Steam versus Steam gains no advantage but if you actually moved your Dwelleth to the other side you could actually probably kill Ramfire maybe if you were able to gain Dwelleth's Hyper faster than Ramfire. So I actually would like to see um, Dwelleth placed in a position to beam his target at Scoriox through Seer here, but be able to tank Ramfire. So if you place Dwelleth over here, that might be a uh, much better uh, option. And then um, Blazonite probably doesn't need to be over here to get attacked by the Umbre, but he could be positioned to protect the the two 
uh, cuculus. So behind here, and then the the seaferous I would have I would have placed on this side as well. Um, the the Archie or Kellyon is probably going to be able to take the most damage from the rake without dying. Um, but he placed him in front of the Titanor because he's he's strong against Titanor. So he will gain hyper and uh, kill Titanor's hyper, so prevent him from, from going hyper um, a lot better than some of these other alluvials. So I, I just see the... The, the biggest concern here is some of these, these units probably needed to be over here to help against the Ramfire and maybe take out Scoriox. Let's see what happens. So he did move uh, the Cuculus to the other side. And Ramfire goes straight to the bigger Cuculus here. So between Ramfire and Seer, they melt him. They go on to Blazonite. Blazonite does heal a little bit, and he's got Archie to help him out. So they're helping a little bit. But now we've got Rake taking out our Seaforus from behind. He is strong versus Seaforus, so he takes him out, and we lose on wave 12. Um, and that's it. Sorry, guys. I hope you enjoyed the content. Um, I appreciate y'all tuning in. Um, we will... Uh, get some more footage and uh, go through the, the footage and talk it over um, more in depth. Again, um, this is just uh, a quick video to, to help keep you guys informed and educated uh, from week to week. I'm trying to post more than one video per week, but uh, uh, I might only be able to do one right now with my schedule. Uh, please like, subscribe to the video. I uh, appreciate everybody who's who's following the channel, who's who's helping me out and supporting me. Um, share with with your friends, other Discord members. If you happen to uh, follow people on Twitch, I do have a Twitch. It is in the description below. So go check that out. Go follow me on there. I do uh, stream at least uh, once a week regularly. Um, I don't have that on my schedule on Twitch, uh, but I do hop into the stream and stream randomly occasionally. Um, so if you want to chat with me, ask me questions live, um, I'm on there. I'm on our Discord in the ACG Guild Discord. So jump in there and follow us. And I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Welcome to my own space. Welcome to my own space. Welcome to my own space.